Hi, my name is John Seaton. Welcome to the Enterprise Tech Content Creators Podcast. In this podcast, we talk to content creators who are making content specifically for social media on all topics related to the enterprise. Now, through their lens, what we hope to do is to answer three questions. How do you get started? What are the challenges? And what are the benefits of creating and posting content? The hope is that after these conversations, uh, you'll get started with your content creation journey. So today we'd like to welcome Chris Palermo. Now, Chris, he's one of the top 50 UC influencers out there. He's part of Cisco's top 1% in the global sales organization. He's a hybrid work strategist. He's a collaboration specialist, and he's a social media extraordinaire with over 5,000 followers on LinkedIn. He's also known as the bearded tech guy on TikTok. So welcome, Chris. No, th thank you for having me. And uh, thank you for doing this because this is just such a great, I guess, public service for people who are interested in, you know, branching out and, and you know, carving out an area for themselves. Yeah, that's what it's all about. So we're just trying to educate people on how to improve and increase their personal brand, how to go on social network and, uh, you know, gain visibility and really understand how do you get started and what the benefits are. But, you know, as I've talked to people, you're my fourth guest. I think you're the one with the most distinct, I'll say, personal <laughs> brand. And I've known you for a while and I knew you before yeah. the distinction. So I want to yeah. get into a little bit about, you know, let's talk about the beard, dude. What's up? When did, when did that come about? Uh, yeah, I, you know, I, you know, pre pre Cisco is interesting, uh, you know, working for a company, you know, we did a lot of consulting. It was very, you know, it was the firm and, and there was a certain look that you had to have. And, you know, I remember even being there being, you know, pulled aside saying that my sideburns were a little too long <laughs> than uh, they would have liked. And I'm like, oh, what, are you, what are you doing? Uh, and then, you know, coming to Cisco, which is a complete 360 uh, or 180, uh, you know, in fact, yep. we I remember they even used to have in their job postings the whole thing. You know, you, you got ink, show us your tattoos yeah. or, you know, purple hair, don't care. You know, so something to that effect. And, you know, I always remember when I saw that in their job postings. I thought it was, you know, more marketing gimmicky mm -hmm. type of stuff. But mm -hmm. then when I got here and and you see that, no, this is this is how it is. You know, one of the first engagements I had at uh, Cisco, we were at a customer site and one of the senior people walks in wearing uh, camouflage short, jean short, or shorts, uh, wallet on a chain, tattoos all over. The guy had a huge beard. I'm like, that's like that's the guy who's going to be running all yeah. this. And it just blew my mind Yeah, because yeah. I mean, I came from a world where, I mean, heck when I started my career, when we were suits four days a week uh, and then, you know, it was a pretty radical shift. So, you know, I think part of what started the beard was just, you know, Hey, I, you know, let's just explore my own personal, you know, th th look, this is, you know, this is something I want to do. And I know that it's something that, uh, you know, I would, be comfortable doing at a, you know, the employer that I'm at. Um, so that said, once it started, uh, you know, then it became people started to recognize me. Right. Like, oh, you know, there's Chris, you know, I wouldn't even have to introduce myself. I'd be in the office. People would come and find me because of the beard, uh, you know, and not just, you know, in the physical world, but also in the virtual world, mm -hmm. you know, popping up on, on LinkedIn or, or whatever, People see the beard and, you know, they, they make that connection. Um, you know, was, there was, uh, yeah. No, I was going to ask, was it a pandemic beard or a pre-pandemic beard? You know, I, I I think like any kind of uh, hair growing male, you, you go through <laughs> the cycles where you grow it, you shave it, you grow it, you shave yeah. it. Uh, so, you know, there was a little bit that I, I had of that pre-pandemic. And then, you know, I think probably once pandemic hit, then I, I, I probably haven't looked back then because then it started to take a life on its own. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, being in sessions, you know, with hundreds of people doing training, whatever, and, you know, people making comments about the beard more so mm -hmm. than the actual content. It's like, whoa, you know, this thing really does have a, a life of its own. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, I love the fact that it gives you a sense of um, uniqueness and, 
you know, I admire the fact that Cisco was true to their word, right? People can come to work as they are with their authentic right. self and, and, and you're doing it. And so let's talk about how that may play into um, how you interact on social media. Now, I see that on LinkedIn, you're active, man. You're posting multiple times a week. Mm-hmm. And so how did you get, how did you really get started and what really led you to want to start um, being active on, on social media? Yeah. So, you know, really, really two things kind of lit the fuse for that. Uh, you know, first I was always very active on Facebook from the very, very beginning mm-hmm. early days. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the, uh, one of, one of the kids I knew growing up went to high school with, he created the mobile version of Facebook at the time when they weren't even thinking mobile. Uh, mm. In fact, uh, you know, as, as rumor has it from him, he went into Mark Zuckerberg's office and said, you know, hey, the iPhone's coming out. I want to love to dabble. And he's like, you could do it. Do it on your own time. Wow. Uh, you know, and now uh, he's, you know, he's retired living in Hawaii on, sure. uh, you know, his own little fruit farm. Uh, but uh, wow. uh, it, it just, you know, goes to show you how, how things have evolved since then, yeah. but yeah, so you know, been active on uh, you know probably like 2006 on Facebook, but you know, I think the way I was active, it wasn't the typical you know, oh, going to the store, up, oh, you know, here's a picture of you know my kids, whatever. It was much more storytelling, mm-hmm. which I don't think a lot of people were doing, and you know, I think that's probably why from the very beginning on Facebook, you know, in my personal world, had a lot of you know, interaction with people and people were kind of drawn to it because it wasn't the normal type of stuff that they found there. Uh, And then, you know, uh, years after doing that, I got uh, advice from someone who's now director at Cisco, who, Mm -hmm. you know, I've been good friends with for a while. And he's like, you know, Chris, what you're doing on Facebook in your personal life, you should do that same type of storytelling, that same type of passion, carry that over to LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, you know, because there's not a lot of stuff like that. So, you know, I think that was the first thing that said, okay, yeah, how do I take what I'm doing on Facebook in my personal life, that type of storytelling, that type of, you know, authenticity Mm -hmm. and bring that over to LinkedIn? Because, you know, I agree. It it was something that I felt I was good at and something if you looked at LinkedIn, you don't see a lot of it. Right. Uh, You know, especially a few years ago. So I think that was one thing. And then the other thing that probably lit the fuse as well. Uh, you know, at, at Cisco, we had a, a bit of gamification when mm-hmm. we were using a LinkedIn Elevate platform. Yeah, uh, We don't use it anymore, but, you know, it was the type of thing where based on links you shared and, and content you shared and the likes you had and the repost, it ranked people at right. Cisco. And yeah, I mean, you throw a little bit of gamification mm-hmm. into anything and people are like, ah, yeah, I'm, I'm you know, this is great. Yeah, I'm in. So, yeah. you know, it was, it was kind of like how those two things collided. And then from there that, you know, set the uh, trajectory. Yeah. So you talk about storytelling, that's been a common theme in, you know, when I'm having these conversations about bringing a little bit of yourself, you know, telling a story and that, that seems to start to resonate on platforms like LinkedIn. Now is LinkedIn the only platform that you're currently on? Or are you doing things on different platforms? Uh, so, you know, I was, I was pretty much back and forth with LinkedIn and Twitter doing, yeah. you know, cross posting a lot of the same stuff. Uh, you know, I've, <laughs> I feel like my Twitter usage have, has fallen off for a variety of reasons. A, a lot uh, of people's I, Twitter I, usage has fallen off because it's a cesspool of, you know, negativity, but that's just my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> uh, so, you know, I've kind of let that atrophy a bit. Um, and then, you know, I think for a while dabbling with, with TikTok because, mm-hmm. you know, again, just as it, it seemed like LinkedIn didn't have a lot of storytelling. I mean, TikTok, that was, that was a total green field. I yeah. mean, not only that I have a lot of IT type of storytelling, but I mean, there was just a lack of a lot of stuff, a lot of the type of content that, you know, I think professional audiences, IT type of audiences would want. And, you know, it also a bit of a different, kind of bend to it yeah. so you know i think that's that's why i enjoyed playing around with that you know i went on a big push for a while uh you know pros and pretty much daily there then yeah, i remember took a that. bit of a break just it got you know it's it's as you know i mean you create content it's 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 a little day exhausting. jobs right <laughs> yeah yeah exactly but you know so mainly linkedin and you know i, th- I think tiktok is something i have to keep on the back burner just because 
you know, it's it's an interesting, different type of place to uh, to share content, especially the type of content that we do in the tech space. Yeah, and I even think that the style and the trends that are on TikTok, even when you port that and bring that to LinkedIn, you get a lot of traction over those types of videos because there's a certain way that you do messaging. Yeah. They're short, they're entertaining, and people like them. Right. And I think you're starting to see a lot of that bleed over to LinkedIn as well and people posting on the same content on multiple platforms, right? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I, I think that the fact that we all have such short attention spans now, it's the perfect medium for that. You know, I mean, when TikTok, I think it was just 15 seconds when they first started. And yeah. that, was, that was about what, you know, I think my attention span has probably eroded down to. Uh, and I, and I'm sure you've experienced it as well, where, you know, I'd go on LinkedIn and, you know, post something that was more longer format that yeah, I, I was like, oh, I'm super proud of this. You know, it's like a five minute video. And then, you know, it would be largely ignored, mm -hmm. um, you know, because people just don't have it's yeah. not to say it wasn't good content. It's right. just, you know, you got to realize that people now it's, you know, it, it's it's just boom, I need, con you know, give me give me something to stimulate. And then I got to move on. You know, people don't yeah. want to sit around yeah. and. You know, watch anything terribly long. It's interesting though, because a lot of the platforms are sort of emulating each other. So mm -hmm. TikTok now, like you said, they started out like 15 seconds, then a minute, then three minutes. Now yep, they're yep. encouraging people to post more long form content on the platform. Yep. And then of course, you know, YouTube and Facebook, they went with reels and shorts because they wanted to emulate TikTok. So it's right, like everybody right meeting in the middle of right you know depending on they want to be able to satisfy everyone's taste whether it's long form or short form so it'll be interesting right. interesting to see if linkedin sort of does the same thing because i think they have like an 11 minute limit on video content we'll see okay if, we'll see if that gets longer but yeah it's yeah interesting. Um, so tell me about so you've been posting on linkedin so tell me yep. about some of the benefits of doing that i know you recently posted that you were invited to be a panelist uh, at an event because of some yeah. of the content that you posted. Uh, so tell me about that and then any other interesting benefits that you've uh, realized. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I guess the, the whole core point of LinkedIn from the very beginning was it's a platform to expand your network. I mean, even back before it was even about content. I mean, it was the type of thing, set it up, you know, get all your contacts here and, and that's you know, that's your yeah. you know, modern day Rolodex, basically. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, I think now that it's become so much content based, it allows you to, you know, expand your network to other audiences and, and pull in people that, you know, maybe you don't have that one degree of separation from. So, you know, with uh, what you were referencing, there was uh, uh, an event going on uh, in Brooklyn. They actually had to bump it, but an event going on in Brooklyn where the people who were organizing it, uh, came across a post that I made, uh, you know, and this was, uh, you know, was just uh, watching the Barbie movie one weekend. And, you know, I saw oh, yeah, the that office one, yeah. that they had in the Barbie movie. And, you know, just a, a lot of what I like to do on LinkedIn is kind of tongue in cheek type of stuff. You know, you learn a little, you laugh a little. Um, you know, I heard somebody told me once that if you can insert an element of humor into stuff that people are learning there, you know, the, the degree to which you remember it is, is just so much more. Yep. Uh, so, you know, just, you know, wrote this uh, post in jest about, you know, kind of comparing the Barbie movie, uh, the Mattel headquarters to a modern hybrid office and, you know, what they should do differently and what they shouldn't. And somehow it ended up on the radar of uh, these folks who plan these sessions uh, around smart buildings and, and uh, you mm -hmm. know, how you set up modern offices. People I've had zero connection to my network. I, I, I mean, there must have been some loose connection somewhere, either that or there was a, a you know hashtag that they picked up on. And, you know, I guess I saw that, looked through some of the other stuff and reached out to me and said, hey, you know, I don't know who you are, but, you know, it looks <laughs> like that you're you're talking about stuff in the space that we're interested in. Uh, you know, we, we like your voice yeah. uh, and, yeah. uh, you know, would you be interested in doing it? So, yeah, I mean, that, that was one where that expanded out like that, uh, you know, and then. You know, even just people, it's, it's wild, you know, working for Cisco, people within Cisco, I feel like I connect more on there than through mm -hmm. other means as well, which is wild. Uh, 
<laughs> so, you know, I have people come up to me all the time saying, you know, oh, you know, I saw this post you you made, whatever. And even people where they're interacting with me in the messaging and, and LinkedIn, I'm like, you know, we have our own corporate tools for us to interact. Why don't we move the conversation over? Oh, over so they there. use a LinkedIn messenger to, to, to have a yeah, chat. Yeah. Not... I'm like, we have tools that we yeah. can do internally. Yeah. Why don't let's let's move That's it over there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I, I think it's all that type of serendipitous organic type of network building that, you know, th there'd be really no other way to do it. And I think now, especially since people aren't going into the office as much as they used to, yeah, that used to be the place to do that. Uh, you know, where you'd bump into people that aren't on your team that you wouldn't normally interact with. Um, you know, like, like they said, especially the last few years, you didn't accidentally walk into the wrong chat group. You didn't accidentally walk mm -hmm. into the wrong virtual meeting. And, you know, because of that, you know, I think a lot of those, you know, those accidental collisions, they went away. And, you know, I think what LinkedIn allows us, it, it gives us those accidental collisions again. It shows us people that we wouldn't normally interact with. Uh, you know, it, it seems to have a pretty good recommendation engine. Uh, yeah. in doing so. And, you know, I think that has certainly helped quite a bit. Yeah. It's amazing that you think about sometimes I'll post things, not just meant for the community at large, but it's like, okay, Cisco folks, there's some things you can use here. Right. And yeah. It's targeted at Cisco people. Yeah. Everybody else could watch it too, but it's a way to yeah. communicate to uh, our colleagues out there who, you know, Unless I send a broadcast email out to everybody in Cisco, that's not they're not going to hear about right. it. Right. So that's yeah the way to do it. Yeah. No, I, you know, I mean, stuff like your videos and other stuff that you know, even internal Cisco people put out there. I, you know, I feel like I learn maybe half it, or if not more, of the stuff uh, that you know I, I should be learning internally on this external platform. Yeah. Which you know, again, yeah. I think it just gives you that megaphone of amplification that you really wouldn't be able to have otherwise. Yeah. So if I were to categorize your content, Chris, I think it's more like you, you'll pull from an article or you'll have an idea and you'll expand upon it with text and pictures. You're not a big video guy, if I remember correctly. Is that right? Yeah. 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 I haven't done a lot of videos. Other than um, the TikTok stuff you were doing, right? Yeah. Yeah. There were a few, a few of that stuff that I'll double post it. But yeah, you know, a, a lot of it, uh, some of it, some original content, but just, you know, kind of 2D charts, mm -hmm. infographics, whatever. Yep. Um, you know, some of it's link sharing, but, you know, th the last thing I wanted to do was just be an echo chamber. Mm -hmm. And, you know, here's a link. Boom, boom, boom. You know, whatever it is, I try to at least give some perspective, a uh, personal perspective on right. my thoughts for it. You know, even if it's a sentence or two, mm -hmm. um, rather than, you know, just kind of being part of the machine and, and regurgitating stuff outward. Yeah, they say one of the, well, not two good things to do is just to reshare a post and not put your spin on it or comments. Or even if yeah. you feel like that's not so great, you know, you should look to comment on other folks content uh if you do repost or reshare you know put your own spin on it and i think the right. lesson that you give chris is that you know a lot of my previous interviews with other folks like um colette and alexis you know they're video content creators right and so oh sure heavy yeah, on yeah. the video side but i think what you demonstrate what's unique is that you don't have to be focused on video you can still make a mark and have impact with text and pictures and infographics um, I think your personal brand doesn't hurt, <laughs> right? Because they see your profiles. Yeah. Okay. So that's, yeah, yeah, that's an indelible mark that, you know, okay, that's Chris, he's posting stuff, you know, I'm going to follow him. But, you know, I think that's yeah. the lesson here that, you know, you don't have, you know, there's all types of content that can have, that can have impact. Um, yeah, no, hundred percent. And, you know, I think especially with just pictures and, and, and infographic stuff like that. It's just so easily consumed that, you know, I, you know, I remember back in the day, one of my favorite newspapers was always USA Today because yeah. they would have, yeah. you know, all the graphs and charts right. I and, forgot about you know, that. very, very modular. Yeah. Uh, and you know, it's just a, just a good, easy way to consume content. Mm -hmm. So what, so what are your challenges? You have any challenges in, in trying to uh, post on a consistent basis and, how often uh, do you have any discipline about how often you, you post? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a great question. Uh, you know, I, especially on LinkedIn, I try not to do anything more than once a day. Mm-hmm. Um, you, a you know, I, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to, <laughs> you know, over, uh, you know, flood what's going on. And right. you know, if I do do twice a day, it's, it's probably something that is, is, you know, time sensitive, you know, mm-hmm. something that I really thought people needed to hear about. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, a, a lot of it, I, you know, I don't necessarily say, oh, you know, today is Wednesday. I got to do my Wednesday post type of thing. Uh, I mean, there's sometimes there's days where I don't do anything, um, you know, and I think part of that is, like I said before, I don't just want to be part of the echo chamber. You yeah. know, I want to make sure that stuff that I put out is something people are going to be interested in and stuff that I'm interested in. Um, you know, and I, I think when you get into creative type of stuff like that, it it's, it's sometimes you, you need that epiphany. It's it's not just, you know, like you're solving a math problem, like, but oh, this is what I'm going to do. It's it's you need that inspiration to come to you. Yeah. And, you know, if, if it doesn't come to me today, maybe I'm not going to post today. But you know what? Maybe when I'm walking to pick up my daughter from school, I'm something's going to pop in my head and be like, oh, I need to do something about that. Or, you know, just whatever experience happens where I realize, oh, you know, this would be a uh, make a pretty good post. Does any one of your posts really stick out in terms of, wow, I didn't expect that kind of response or something <laughs> yeah. that went viral <laughs> that you didn't expect? Um, yeah, I mean, probably a couple of, you know, I think the one that really stands out that people still ask me about, uh, and this is probably two years ago, uh, was where you know, I was with the, doing a customer briefing in our New York office, showing our devices and how our devices do facial recognition. Yeah. Uh, and the bot, we went into diagnostics mode. It showed the box that was trying to do facial recognition for my face. But then there was a second box to try to do facial recognition of my beard. <laughs> uh, so, and, and that might have actually been the post that kind of set the beard onto a life of its own, too. Right. But there was something about that where, you know, people, I think like the tech aspect, being able to talk about facial recognition and all the things there, then, you know, just the, all the comments and jokes about trying to, you know, Oh, you have someone living in your beard or whatever. Right. Uh, so that, that kind of took off, uh, off on its own. So I think that's one end. And, you know, the other, every now and then I'll, I'll do stuff family related, you know, yeah. you just save those for the weekend. So I don't, yeah. you know, do it on Monday through Friday, but you know, family picks, you know, mm-hmm. stuff, uh, you know, with, my kids playing sports and, you know, they'll, you know, th- those, those I, I do, you know, just, I, I like, I like to share stuff like that. Yeah, I like, yeah. I like people to know a little bit more about me. And, mm-hmm. you know, I think with those, it's, it's wild because people will come up to me and before even asking about anything work related, like, ah, oh, Chris, how's your son doing, yeah. you know, on the Red Bull Academy yeah. or, you know, things like that. And, uh, you know, first it's like, wait a minute, who, who are you? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, so, you know, I think certainly the beard one and, you know, I think definitely just some of the personal ones, just seeing how people have an eagerness to absorb that in addition to uh, to the work stuff. And, you know, I think in many ways it, it accentuates the work stuff. Yeah, you bring up an interesting point about posting things about your family. Um one would think that, yeah, it's a real place for LinkedIn for that. You know, five years ago, no one would have done that. But I'm seeing more and more of that. You know, I've I've linked some things to my son in the past. I mean, I, as you know, I could post a ton of stuff about him, but I, right, right. I don't. But you know, if he does something extraordinary, or you know, he sometimes he'll post on LinkedIn, and I'll kind of reshare that and repost that. Uh, oh, nice. But okay. I think people are interested, right? Um, on that, you know, it's the why, right? It's the why we do what we do, and it. it, it and it makes you more human and then I can relate yeah. to you more. And then I can understand, you know, I understand Chris more cause he's got a son, he plays soccer and that, that just helps with understanding the community. So I think it's great that, that you actually do that. Yeah. And you know, it actually makes me think of the post I had the other day where we were talking about how meetings now, because so many of them have become virtual people join boom, right. When the meeting starts yeah, they end right when that. it ends, you mm-hmm. don't have that, kind of small talk yeah. time anymore. Yeah. Right. And that was the time right. where you really got to know people. That's so, you know, you know, maybe in some ways people are thirsting to know. It's, it's not like, you know, they're, they want to, 
you know, know uh, the in and outs of everything that you're doing. But, you know, I think it's just human nature to want to know a little bit more about that person. And, you know, I, I think that's why they tell you when you do any sort of virtual collaboration, when you have the opportunity to meet that person face to face first. Mm-hmm. It's just so much richer type of collaboration because, you know, you have all those, you know, various idiosyncrasies about that person that, you know, help you understand them better. Yeah. Uh, so do you track metrics at all? Do you look at, you know, what your viewership is like for certain types of posts versus others and try to adjust or you're just pumping stuff out there? Um, it's, I mean, it's mostly pumping stuff out there. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll, you know, every, every, every quarter I'll go back and see, you know, Hey, what, what performed well, what didn't, right. um, because it is, it is surprising. And I'm sure you've seen it too, mm-hmm. where it's the stuff that I think would be gold sometimes just peters out Yeah. other stuff. You know, a lot of it is, you know, I mean, there's a reason why viral is called being viral. It's just the right person sees it, the right person likes it. And because of that, it, it gets routed to a certain whatever. Um, so, you know, I think that, just try, trying to it's not that you can decode the algorithm that's but, right it's the algorithm it, where it's subject yeah, to the yeah. algorithm <laughs> yeah it's it's uh it's interesting but yeah you know i try to pay attention of oh i did this on this day at this time how did this perform versus this, this similar thing that i did maybe later in the day uh you know am i pulling in you know, some of my network from Europe versus West Coast US and who's responding to this. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I just kind of kind of like birdshot where I'll just try all different days, all different times, see whatever works. And, you know, it seems like it all kind of balances out anyway. Has any of it translated to real life? Because I know you you're in front of customers a lot. Have you ever been recognized for your post or your personal brand when folks say go into New York and they're like, Oh, you're that guy. You ever get any of that? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Often, which, mm-hmm. uh, which is good. Uh, because, you know, I think it establishes some credibility that, you know, Hey, this, this person is somebody with a voice that we know about, or we've heard about. Um, you know, in fact, there was even once where, uh, uh, I was at a store, I was outside of our area at a store somewhere and somebody recognized me, uh, and asked for a picture <laughs> just you know, just I'm just I got a store shopping, and they're like, "Yeah, I've seen you on LinkedIn." Uh, so that was that was pretty cool. Yeah, and, that's, uh, that's cool. That's cool. So I think yeah, some, my, my kids weren't impressed by that. I tried to tell. Were them, they with yeah, you I'm at the not... time? Were they with you? What was that? Were they with what you? When, were they, they weren't. With... They weren't. Otherwise, that would have been yeah. uh, that would have been a, a truly yeah. great moment. That they probably, they probably didn't believe you when you told them, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so I think we got some good lessons here from you, Chris, that, that are pretty unique. One is it's not all about video. You can right. post different types of content. Um, the family aspect, right? The fact that you can post things about your family and that gets traction. And, and I think you made a good point about, you know, in, in this virtual hybrid world and the fact that people show up, right? <laughs> At nine o'clock, you yeah. don't have time for that small talk. And I think there's, there's certainly room um, room for that. And I think the other, the, the other lesson is, you know, developing the personal brand. So I think you've mm-hmm. been very unique in, in doing that. Uh, not only physically what you do, but then the messaging <laughs> right, right. Out on LinkedIn and the twist that you put on information and, you know, you have fun with it. Right. And I think that's, what's important is yeah. to just kind of have fun. Um, so with that, you know, as we wrap up, any advice to someone who's out there, who's looking to get started? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think it's just a matter of jump in, um, you know, and, and try not to get discouraged if you don't see the, uh, you know, interaction right away. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like like, you know, we were talking about the algorithm. It takes time for the algorithm to to learn and to adapt and to figure out, you know, who should it be sending your content out to? Um you know, I remember the initially when I was a little bit more heavy on Twitter versus uh, LinkedIn. You know, I put what I thought was some solid content out on Twitter, and I mean, it was like I, I might as well just be throwing this right in the trash because I don't think anyone's looking at it. It's, it's yeah. going nowhere. Um, but then, you know, you do realize after a while, then 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 the engine starts going. 
I mean, it's like they, you know, that that Chinese proverb about, you know, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second yeah. best time is now. I mean, that that's yeah. what it is. And, you know, but that's also, you know, whenever I uh, talk to any any high school students, I do a lot of, uh, uh, you know, college interviewing stuff and oh, stuff nice. with, uh, you know, our externship program. Yeah. And I'm shocked how many of them, 16, 17, 18 year olds have LinkedIn accounts. And I'm like, you know, bravo. And and yeah. I tell the ones, if you don't do it, you know, even if you have five connections, but if you start yeah. now, 10 years, you know, just keep adding everyone you're going to have um, because it's just only going to grow. And that's where you really start to build your audience. I think that's the other nugget, right? And so I talk to high school students as well, and we mm -hmm. encourage them and we teach them about what LinkedIn is all about and that it's just as important or even more important to build your professional social network rather than your personal social network. And right. the time to get started as you start to meet people and maybe you looking for mentors by building that network now, you know, just think, you know, throughout your career, what that network will look like. So I think that's oh, sure. a very important nugget. So any of those parents out there listening with high school students, <laughs> get your kids on LinkedIn, understand what it is because that can help them in the future, right? Because my yeah. son's on LinkedIn, you know, he, he's got contacts from there. I'm sure you're gonna teach your sons and, and, and kids to be on there. And I think that's that's another important lesson. So that thanks, for sure. for, that. yeah, thanks for bringing that up. That's a good one. Um, so I think I think we, we talked about a lot here today. I think we got some good nuggets. So, you know, I really wanna thank you, Chris, for, for joining and sharing your journey and experiences with us. You know, hopefully this inspires others to just get started. And, you know, Chris, thanks again. Yeah, no, absolutely, John. Thanks for having me. All right. Take care, everybody. Okay. See you.